Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel and welcome back to another Sims 4 speedrunning video or welcome to the channel if you are new here. So in today's video, I'm going to be building in the world of Sao My Shuno, which is the world that we got from the expansion pack the Sims 4 season live in. And I'm going to be building a New York kind of like complex. It has a coffee shop, a bookshop, which also doubles up as a library as well as a music store. So this lot is built on a 30 by 30 slot and it's built in the, I think it's the Spice District or the Spice Market basically the the cheapest area in the world of San Marcino basically now I just wanted to sit down this week and build something a little bit more I don't want to say industrial because it doesn't end up being industrial well actually the coffee shop on the inside is a little bit it's a bit urban on the inside which I absolutely love but I just wanted to build something a little bit different and I came across this picture on Pinterest which I'll find and I'll pop on the screen now now I believe that this is meant to be Lego <laughs> this picture which is actually funny because I used to work at Lego when I was in uni but I found this picture on Pinterest and it really inspired me and it kind of like set me off to build almost like a, a miniature complex a miniature little city or like a multi-purpose community lot now i've done a few different community lots before that have multiple purposes and it's been a while since i've done one and so i basically took this idea from this picture and i decided to make it into a coffee shop which in sims 4 terms would be cafe as well as a music store which i say music store it basically just ends up being a guitar store because we don't have that many musical instruments in The Sims 4, as well as a bookshop and a library. And I'm just so happy with the way it turned out. So I really hope you guys like it as well. Now, originally when you open up a brand new save file and you travel to the world of San Marcino, this is one of the karaoke bars. Now there is two in total in the world. There is one in this area, in this neighborhood, which is the lot that I'm building on. And there's also one in the, I think it's the fashion district. Now I decided that I wanted to make this myself. I say I decided, going into it, I already knew that I was making it for my save file because for the longest time I've wanted to have a coffee shop or kind of like a cafe in the world of so much you know because I don't know if it's just me but sometimes I want my sims to go and get a coffee in the city but there's only them little coffee stands which they can change so sometimes the coffee stand might be I don't know like the vegetable stand where your sims can buy fruit and vegetables or it might be some sort of food that isn't coffee basically and i just i wanted there to be like a bit of a coffee shop experience in my save file especially in the world of san marcino and so i decided that instead of having two karaoke bars one in this neighborhood and then one in the other neighborhood it's kind of like it to me it's it's not pointless but it's a little bit like okay but it's a bit repetitive because i've already got one in this neighborhood in like elsewhere and so i decided that i'm going to make this one into the cafe and then the other one in the fashion district it's probably still going to end up being a karaoke bar i just need to rebuild it at some point but just so then you kind of got more gameplay there's more things to experience because the way that i want to build my save is i want there to be one type of community slot somewhere in the world whether there be only like two or three types of museums i still want to have a few museums i want there to still be a few different restaurants like different types of restaurants that serve different food and so on and so forth i just basically want there to be a range and so i decided the best thing to do instead of having two of the same pretty much lot that has pretty much the exact same gameplay just make one into something a little bit different and so i just kind of like went off the idea of a cafe and then to me a bookshop kind of goes hand in hand with a, with a cafe because I was thinking with university students you could have or to be honest even high school students you get them to come to this cafe after school they go and get a cup of coffee and then they go next door maybe they buy some textbooks and then they can go upstairs and then use a library function it's kind of like a, a nice little hangout maybe for university students or high school students and then the music store as well was kind of inspired by the picture you can see it from the picture I'll pop it up again on the screen now just so you can kind of like refresh your memory but on the picture itself, the buildings don't actually look that similar. It was more so kind of like the concept, but on the end one, that ends up being kind of like a little music shop or like music model on the end of, of the picture that I was looking at. And so I thought, you know what, music shop, it kind of goes hand in hand. I haven't really ever built, or I say haven't really ever, I have never built a music store in the game. And you know what? It ended up being one of my favorite areas of this whole entire build, because like the cafe or like the coffee shop on the inside is quite, it's quite urban-y, so we've got so many guitars, like you walk in, there's kind of like a tiered thing with the platforms, there's like different levels, the platforms have got different types of guitars on them, we've got like electric guitars, we've got acoustic guitars, we've also got them, I think it's called amplifiers, we've got some of them from the mosquito stuff pack and so I chucked a few of them in there, we've also got like a neon sign on the wall, loads of different like ivy hanging down and loads of different like guitars hanging on the wall, it's just, it ends up being so cool, <laughs> I don't know how else to explain it but I really like the way it turned out and yeah I really hope you like the way it turned out as well but getting on and talking a little bit more about the build itself, 
but so you can see that I have pretty much constructed the front portion how I want it to look from kind of like the street view from if your sims are walking across the road on the pavement on the other side like how it's going to look from the front I kind of focused on the front did each building bit by bit so I could kind of figure out the spacing of the windows and stuff like that and then now you can see I'm kind of like moving it onto the side of the building and I'm doing it some of these kind of like industrial I was about to say industrial penthouse, industrial staircases, kind of like leading up the side of the building. Now, like I mentioned at the start, I want you to build kind of like a New York inspired coffee shop and bookstore. Like this whole entire lot was kind of New York City inspired. And I feel like before in the past, when I've done location based builds, like I've built Parisian apartments, which of course is based off Paris. I've built Italian family homes, which were based off a certain area in Italy, which was Tuscany. And I feel like whenever I've done them before in the past, I always say I've never been <laughs> and I'm just looking at pictures. But this time, Around. fortunately I have been to New York I've been to New York I think like three or four times now I haven't been in a few years but I didn't really end up looking at too many pictures on Pinterest like I said I was originally just kind of looking at this little Lego model <laughs> that I found on Pinterest and I might have looked at like one or two pictures just to kind of get like an idea for different kind of brick colors and different kind of like window layouts and stuff like that but in terms of building the actual structure I basically just relied on my memory but I, I think it feels a little bit New Yorky. I mean, one, <laughs> New Yorky, that's a really bad description. But one thing that I really wanted to make sure I included in this build somewhere was a few different fire escapes because New York buildings, wherever you go, I feel like you always see these really tall buildings that have these fire escapes on the side. Now, from my understanding, and please correct me if I'm wrong, the reason why there are so many different staircases and ladders on the side of these buildings is because in case of an emergency and people need to evacuate the building instead of having them to go on the inside they can just go on the outside and it's a bit of a bit of like a health and safety thing i don't know please correct me if i'm wrong but that was from my understanding i also have a feeling it's got something to do with the fact how tall the buildings are so say for instance you're on like the eighth or the ninth floor of a new york apartment and then there's an emergency and you need to evacuate instead of having to walk down all of them set of stairs by the way this is just, again this is from my understanding please tell me if i'm being silly here and this is like incorrect but from my understanding if you go on the exterior it's a bit safer because say if there was like a fire hazard or something it's just it basically that's why they're fire escapes again correct me if i'm wrong but i felt like it was necessary basically to have a few in this build because where it is new york inspired and so there ends up being at two fire escapes there is one on the left hand side you can just see it on the corner of the screen and there is also one on the back of the building which you can see that i've just finished burnishing like the kind of the top roof portion now when i was building this i i'm consistently thinking about my safe file and how it's going to integrate into all the different groups that I'm going to have, like all the different clubs from get together and I'm always just consistently thinking about how everything's going to mesh well together. And when I was building the roof portion, I had the idea of why don't I make it so for one certain group that's going to be in my safe folks so like a club from get together, why don't I make it so this is going to be their hangout, but instead of their hangout being downstairs in the coffee shop or as I don't know, in the music store, in the bookshop or wherever, why don't I make it so their hangout, where they like to hang out with their friends on like a Friday or Saturday night, would be on the rooftop of a building. So you would see that on the top of the roof, I placed down loads of different like rubbish. I was thinking that the teenagers probably go up there every weekend. They, I don't know, they get pizza. They just sit up there, maybe like drink cartons of apple juice or something. And so there's loads of different like cartons and just bits and bobs and just general rubbish. What I feel like the teenagers, they've kind of eaten up there and then they just left their rubbish just to sit there because they're not really too fussed about cleaning it up. And then I also placed down like some graffiti up there. There is one graffiti which is one that is just like purely decorative. But then I also placed down the graffiti that your sims can interact with. So your sims can literally go onto the roof of this building and then paint all these different types of murals. Like a city mural or there ends up being I think like political murals that your sims can paint there's basically there's a ton of different things that your sims can paint or like graffiti on top of the building and i just thought it was a really nice touch and also the side of the building now you can see the side the way that i've done the ladder it's not an actual ladder because i feel like whenever you walk through the streets of new york you often see that there's like loads of different fire escapes and loads of different staircases and then normally there is a ladder which connects from like the first floor down to the ground floor but a lot of the time the ladder's kind of like pulled up because realistically, this is how I'm thinking, if you were to live in one of the New York apartments and you consistently got your ladder so it's all the way down to the floor, any type of like pedestrian or any type of just random person walking the street could technically just climb up your ladder 
and then just climb through your, I don't know, your door or your window and then get into your apartment. So I feel like that's probably the reason why you always see them ladders kind of like halfway up so no one on the street can kind of like get into your apartment. But I was originally going to place down like one of them full ladders that we've got from Eco Lifestyle. But then I had this idea and then I remembered that fairly recently I actually discovered that we've got this ladder in the game which came from, I think it's Cats and Dogs live edit menu. And so I just replaced the ladder that was from Eco Lifestyle that your Sims can go up and down. And then I just put this one that is a little bit smaller. And it kind of, to me, it feels a little bit more realistic. It looks like it's been pulled up a little bit. So, you know, random Sims you can't just walk in to other sims apartments which moving on actually and talking about the apartment portion of this build because i didn't mention it in the intro and i just i didn't want to i don't want to say falsely advertised because it ends up being apartments up there but they're not fully furnished apartments because basically obviously you've got the coffee shop you've got the music store you've got the bookshop you've got all of that on the downstairs portion and then you can see on the upstairs level above that that ends up obviously being walls and windows and then obviously the fire escape that ends up being stuff up there and originally i was thinking oh, i can just decorate like three apartments it'd be really fun because i could decorate some really tight spaces try and replicate what i've seen on like tv shows or in films of having really tight little new york apartments and i was really up for it but then i was thinking about it and realistically it's probably not the best thing to do for gameplay wise because if you're not aware all the different festivals that we have in the game from a city living or the other ones that we've got from other packs like snowy escape and whatever all of the festivals that we have in the game aren't locked to a lot they'll just be locked to the neighborhood so say for instance when your sims will travel to the spice market or the flea market they won't load into load they won't load into the market as such like they won't load into the festival they'll have to load into a community lot that's near it and it always happens to be this one so whenever you get your sims to go to the flea market you'll notice that you can actually come into the karaoke bar your sims can have a little bogey you know your sims can sing karaoke because this lot needs to be loaded now when i came around to figuring out the upstairs floor plan and how i wanted it to be because your sims will load into this lot in gameplay i didn't want to fully furnish it i'm saying fully furnished because there is some bits and bobs about because basically whenever you get your sims to go to a community lot and it ends up being a computer or it ends up being a tv or a sofa or a bed my sims in my game they just go straight upstairs they'll 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 go and have a they'll go and have an app or they'll go and watch someone's tv or they'll just they'll just go into other people's apartments and realistically i didn't want that to be the case i didn't want to also add on an extra time to loading screens because where it's such a big lot in terms of there's a lot of stuff going on in the inside that ends up being three apartments if i would have fully furnished them all with sofas and decorations and loads of bits of clutter and loads of just bits and bobs it would have been really heavy on like lower end computers and also it would have just been really heavy on the game especially loading into like a festival and so because of that I decided I'd still decorate them, but they're going to be move-in ready. So instead of having, you know, beds and sofas and PCs and posters on the walls and loads of bits and bobs, on the upstairs portion of the apartments, which you will see me furnish, it ends up being just like the basic standards for your Sims needs. So there is loads of counters for kitchens, like kitchen counters, there is bathrooms, there is three apartments in total. Two of them have two bedrooms and then there is one that has one bedroom. And to be honest, I'm actually quite gutted because... Maybe, do you know what? maybe I might come back to this at another point and then maybe possibly the next time or like one of the times I furnish an apartment I could just furnish one of the upstairs ones because the way that I've done the floor plan I thought was so interesting there is so many different just it's re it's just completely different to any of the current apartment floor plans that you can do within the apartments in San Marciano or in the world of eco lifestyle which is Evergreen Harbour it's just they're so unique and I would have loved to have fully furnished them, but like I said, I didn't want it to heavily impact the build. I didn't want Sims to get confused and I don't know. I didn't want the barista to go upstairs and then start playing computer games. It's just, to me, it's not realistic. And so on the upstairs level, there is three bare basic kitchens. So, you know, counters, kitchen sinks, fridge, ovens. There is also the bathroom areas. Basically, I made it so if you was realistically going to move into an apartment and it's not furnished, it would have the toilet already built in. I mean, when you move house or when you move apartments, you don't pick up your toilet and put it in your suitcase. You, you, you leave it there and then you move into another place that's obviously got a toilet or whatever. And so if you wanted to, you could 100% download this and then maybe if you have got a little bit of a higher spec PC, you could decide to decorate them fully and you can have three different apartments. I feel like it would be a really good gameplay idea 
say for instance if you had a family that maybe owned the coffee shop downstairs which you can't technically do in game but you can do throughout mods or to be honest if you're someone that doesn't want to play with mods and you want to still run this as like a, a retail shop you could maybe own the music store or you could own the bookstore and then you could have a household upstairs and then maybe you've got a household that consists of I don't know a set of parents and then maybe they've got two kids that have now like fully grown up and their kids have got their own families you've then got three apartments you could just like fully furnish them depending on what your household needs and like the different age groups and stuff like I said I, I'm quite gutted actually I say quite I'm really gutted that I didn't fully furnish them because they are really interesting floor plans but like I said I just didn't want it to be too too heavy on the game and if it wasn't for my save file I would have but let me know if you would be interested in seeing me actually furnish the inside and maybe like a later point because I'd be up for it and would I do all three I probably would do all three because they're, they're all different even though they're like pretty much the same like layout in terms of like the exterior building the floor plans are all quite unique from one another and they're just really interesting but you can see that I've now moved on and started doing the floor plans which funny enough I left quite quite light within this video because if you've like if you're familiar with my channel if you've watched my channel before you'll know that I kind of have like a a bit of a routine when it comes to building a house I'll normally build the exterior shell I'll then come in do the floor plan then I'll do the windows the doors and so on and so forth but for some reason I just got a bit carried away when I was doing the exterior and I left the floor plan pretty much right until the last minute until I needed to come in and start furnishing which was quite a bad idea but to be honest I didn't have to alter any of the outside so I was quite happy about that but you'll see all the different floor plans for all the different like commercial areas as well as the floor plans for the upstairs apartments come together but I do just want to talk about the exterior back portion of this building because I am so happy with the way it came together and normally I'm a little bit kind of intimidated if that's the right word when it comes to the back of commercial buildings because in real life say if you go to the coffee shop or say if you go shopping with your mates or wherever you go in real life and you visit a commercial building the back of it it's normally just a bin room <laughs> and I didn't just want it to make it into a bin room in the back of this lot I wanted it to also just be interesting I wanted it to be as interesting as the front of the building as interesting as the neighborhood around it and so you would notice at the back portion I pretty much tried to replicate areas of the neighborhood itself so areas of the spice district into the back portion of this building to make it seem a little bit seamless make it like not stick out like a sore thumb and it also just makes more sense that way and I'm just I'm really happy with the way it turned out. One thing you might have noticed is the way that I did the landscaping. So if you ever visit this area of San Marcino and you load it into a festival, or if you load it into the karaoke bar, or if wherever you're loading into in this neighborhood, basically, you'll notice that in like the central area, like the square part of the neighborhood, there ends up being like the festival area that has the food stalls and stuff. The way that it is, there's kind of like these landscape like areas that are quite high up. They're in like a semicircle motion, but instead of just having like bushes and flowers and trees, growing out the floor they're kind of like growing out of these planters and I wanted to kind of put the idea from the neighborhood in this building and the way that I did it is I basically use these massive planters that we got from I think the live edit base game items and I like layered a few of them together to make it look like one big piece and I put them on either sides of like the back portion and then I also use the same exact landscaping that we've already got in the planters in the neighborhood itself to try and make it seem seamless and then on the like middle inside part of it you would have noticed I placed down a bus which first of all the bus does not move like the bus is just purely a decorative item but I thought it was really cool it kind of like merged in this like urban feel that I really wanted to give this community a lot but we got it from the werewolf game pack it's pretty much just a decorative now I'm not gonna lie I did really want to make it red because I used a black swatch of it but there is a red swatch and I was so tempted to do it but I didn't do it just in case anyone commented saying this isn't London why have you got like a because it looks like a London bus if you put it into red but basically there is this decorational bus that you can plop down anywhere in the game and there is a new bar that also came with the werewolf game pack to be honest you can use any bar but it pretty much just slots in now I still wanted to use this this bus decoration because where I wanted this lot to feel a little bit urban a little bit more like city like I didn't want it just to have like a bar in it it just it didn't make too much sense and so I thought why not just take inspiration from the neighborhood itself from all the different like market stalls and all the different like food stalls that your sims can go up to and place down another food stall into it but I decided to use a food stall that is not currently in the world so we've got these like loads of different food stalls from loads of different expansion packs and game packs and whatever and the one that I decided to use is one from Discover University and it's a pizza one now in personal gameplay experience I can swear I've never seen that before in my whole entire life I didn't even know that was a thing but apparently with the Discover University expansion pack we have a kebab stall as well as a pizza stall 
never seen it in my life but like i said i've been to new york before a few times and all the times i've been to new york the amount of times that i have seen like pizza shops or like hot dog stands or something like that i thought why not as it is like a new york inspired build placed down at this little pizza stand inside of this bus it fully works it's fully functional your sims can hire a vendor and then a vendor will come and they'll go inside the bus there is no problems with it whatsoever it is just it is so cute and then with the lights as well with the landscaping and so i just use this certain tree that we got from the cottage living expansion pack even though it's not already in the area it's quite similar to the trees that we've already got so to me it kind of like blended in but this certain tree that i've used it's actually got lights that you can also find in like the debug menu that kind of like wrap around this tree and so i use them as well and then i also got some more fairy lights and then hung them onto the building and then below it i put some like picnic tables and like little seating benches and it's just it's just so pretty and I'm just so happy the way the exterior portion of the build came together and it's the screenshots are just so beautiful but anyway moving on from that because as you can see I've now moved on into the inside and I've really started furnishing the coffee shop so you can see that I started off with furnishing the actual like barista area so the way that I did the floor plan is your sims would walk in kind of like through the seating area and then if they wanted to go and order a coffee they'd have to go not to the back of the room, but kind of like more towards the back portion, just because I didn't want to put it so close to the front because sometimes when Sims order coffees or if they order pastries, they can just like clog it up. And so it's kind of got like its own little separate area. It's down a platform. The baristas have got their own little separate space. They have to walk through a little gate. And then behind the actual espresso bar itself, I cluttered it up with some counters. I also put some like menus in the walls and then just loads of just little bits and bobs that I feel like you would find in a coffee shop. But then as well as that, you would have seen that I've already done the staff room for this coffee shop, which I mean, to be honest, is actually quite a pointless room because technically your sims don't need it but i like it because i like the realism and even though it's it's not exactly going to be used i just like it for realism purposes because realistically you go into a coffee shop you go into a restaurant wherever you go in real life there's always going to be a back area that us as customers don't see it's going to be somewhere where the staff can have their lunch break the staff will probably clock into maybe they'll change into their work uniform and i pretty much just made that back room into that just because i wanted it to feel realistic like i said it's pretty pointless. You seem to actually use it. But in the staff room, it ends up being at some lockers. I imagine that maybe the baristas every single day, they clock in, they put their bag in their locker. Maybe they change into their uniform and their like outside clothes are kept in the locker. There's also some kind of like storage unit, which I use it quite often. It's from Dino. It's kind of on the other side of the room, but it's pretty much like a, a decorational piece. I like to use it in commercial buildings because if ever I'm doing like a restaurant or a cafe or a bar, I always think it's like extra ingredients. So for example, for this coffee shop, maybe the, the storage unit has got extra coffee beans, maybe it's got extra syrups, maybe it's got extra pastries that are maybe frozen and then they need to be unfrozen. Just little bits like that. There is also like a little, little table in there, which I place down, I think a book and then a microwave food plate which the one that I've placed down, I'm pretty sure it's just for decorative, it won't spoil. I just basically wanted it to seem like a barista has popped into their lunch break and you know, they're sitting in there and they're eating their lunch. Like I said, it's pretty pointless, but I just like it for the readers and purposes. And plus the coffee shop is big enough. To be honest, I didn't really need any more seating than what I already had. And so I just thought, just just for me, just for the realism, I'm gonna add a little staff room in, but you can see that I'm just going around and furnishing the rest of the coffee shop itself. So this is like the main portion. So over here, I'm doing one of them little, I don't know what they call, like they're sugar stations. Do you remember, you don't really find them nowadays. I don't find anyway. The coffee shops that I go into nowadays, you never do it. It's always the baristas do it behind the counter. But before 2020, basically, I remember used to go into coffee shops and there used to be these little stands that used to have like sugar and then like little wooden sticks and different kind of milks and different kind of syrups and stuff like that. And I basically wanted to make that into the game and so I did the best that I could. <laughs> I basically just used some little tins that we got from the Country Kitchen kit. Also used these little like napkin holders that we got from Dino. I twisted a few of them round. I was thinking that maybe they're just, you know, like napkins when your Sims maybe got a hot coffee, maybe it's leaking. And then I also used these little kind of like picture items. I'm pretty sure they're from the Eco Lifestyle debug menu. And I'm pretty sure your Sims will use them when they're trying to make candles. But I was thinking there could be like different types of milks. So, you know, you've got your oat milk, you've got your soy milk, you've got your almond milk and then you've got all your different types of milks basically on this little stand your sims can go and order themselves a coffee and then as they're walking out the door they can just go and like stir in whatever they want and then also actually talking about stirring in i found this like pretty big like 
it's almost like a shovel i don't know what it is it's not like a shovel size it doesn't look like a shovel but it, it kind of it's a shape of a shovel found it in the debug menu i thought it would be perfect to size down and try and use it as a spoon because we have got spoons in the game that your sims will obviously interact with so if they're eating like soup or if they're eating certain things and they need a spoon it will change like the utensils that your sims will use will change and you can even get your sims to use chopsticks now but i basically i use this kind of like this spoon this shovel thing and I slice it down to look like a spoon because the spoons that we've got in the debug menu they won't transfer over into the gallery and I also have a feeling that they could possibly spoil but the ones that I've used they're not actually associated with food and they sh they should transfer over to the gallery I'm pretty sure I didn't see any like hazard so that they wouldn't and yeah I just plopped them down to the side again for the realism purposes it just I like the extra small details but also in that room as you would have seen I just finished it off and placed down some like high-end tables in the middle put some like industrial looking kind of like urban looking bar stools and there is also like two little separate seating areas where your sims can sit in these armchairs which are from the industrial loft kit and they're kind of like these leather chairs and they can just kind of like look out onto the spice district in San Myshuna. It just, I'm so happy with the whole entire build. I'm just so happy with the way the exterior came together, the interior came together. And even though I know I built it and I'm probably being a bit biased, but I know I'm going to use this in every single one of my save files. And I'm just, I really hope you guys like it as well. But anyway, moving on and actually talking about what I'm doing right now. So you can see that I've now moved on into the next room, which is the bookshop as well as the kind of like double up to be a library. Now, in the end, it's actually quite funny. It's actually quite comical because there are so many books. I couldn't even tell you the amount of books that I placed down into this bookshop and then also in the library portion upstairs because the way that I did the floor plan, your sims would walk in through like the bookshop, like the bookstore. So where your sims, I imagine, would be able to buy their books, rent their books, you know, hire out something from the library. This is in the downstairs portion. But then in the upstairs portion, I decided to make it into more of like a, a reading library. So your sims can go up there. Again, there is a ton of bookcases. There is, I'm pretty sure, like a chess table. There's some like research stations. I also decided to make a little kids area because at one point I was thinking, what about if you've got like a university student that was, because this is the, like, the thought process that was going through my mind. I was decorating it and I was thinking, this would be a really good hangout situation for university students and then I was thinking you could possibly have like a a university student that doesn't have a lot of money probably lives in the spice district in one of the apartments and probably has like a toddler and they're probably like a single parent they need to go to the the library to research or to study for their exams or something and I wanted it to be like kind of like friendly for all members of the family and so I was thinking that you could have university students come here and then if they've got children there's also like a little kids area upstairs as well which I'm just it's just so cute but you can see over here I'm just cluttering up these bookcases which I tried to make look like a table now at the end of the day it's a bookshop as well as a library so there's going to be a lot of different bookcases within this lot somewhere i mean it's also a coffee shop and a music store but in terms of like the library and the bookshop portion naturally there is going to be a ton of different bookcases but something that i find is if you have loads of the same bookcase over and over again it feels a little bit too like formal because i feel like if you were to go to like a community library they're not going to have like loads of different random bookcases or like loads of different woods and loads of different shapes and sizes more so than not they're going to be all the same kind of bookcase it's going to be like well presented well put together i didn't want that for this build i wanted it to feel a little bit like a family owned bookshop family owned library if that's even a thing and so basically i tried to use a mixture of different bookcases both in the downstairs but mainly on the upstairs portion as well and i wanted there to be a side table for where your sims walking through the front door maybe they've rented a book and they need to return it they just kind of like chuck it onto the table i feel like in every single library that i've stepped foot in which in all fairness i haven't stepped foot into a library since it would have been my university library which i graduated I was class of 2020, so it's been a while since I've been in the library, but I feel like every single library that I have been in at some point, there always seems to be that little area, more so like by the front door or more so by like the receptionist or like the library's desk, where basically people return their books and they just flung it on. And like, they don't care. They're this like really unorganized, really just messy and just filled with loads of different books and loads of just bits and bobs and folders and just, just stuff. And I basically wanted to replicate that on the downstairs portion, but I didn't want to use a side table because I find that with the side tables that we've got in the game, none of them kind of like match the idea that I had in my head. You would have seen downstairs, I also use this little like library cart item, which is from a base game. It's one of the unlockables from a certain career. I'm not sure what career, but I feel like it's probably the writer's one. But you would have seen it's kind of like a little cart, which probably Sims will go up to and take books out and then put 
books back in, maybe they're books that need to be rented out, or maybe they're just books that need to be put back in their place. That is kind of like, it's got books on both sides, it's kind of like a bit of a table. I wanted to do that, but on a bigger portion basically. And so instead of using like a standard table, I just decided to use a bookcase, size it down and kind of like into the floor, and then use that as a table. And it worked out perfectly. But then you can see also on the downstairs portion, I did this kind of like layered thing with loads of different books, because whenever you walk into, in my experience anyway, like WH Smith's or Waterstones, wherever you're going to buy your books, I feel like there's always kind of like a tiered system of loads of different books, more so like the new releases or if they have a sale. It's kind of like all these books being like showcased to you, trying to tempt you to buy them. Basically, I just wanted to try and recreate that. So I basically used this really high table, which is one of the ones that your Sims will sit at with bar stools. I used that in the middle as kind of like the, the top tier portion and then below it I used a bigger table which is for six sims and the one that I've used is from I believe Jungle Adventure. They're quite similar woods and I basically merged them in together and then just cluttered it up again with so many different book stands, so many different individual books, just trying to make it look like these are either things that are going on sale or maybe they're like a new author's release or maybe it's like an existing author that's been like very well recognized maybe they've come out with a new book and it's just kind of been showcased the year sims when they walk in through the front door i just i love it it's very cluttered it's very just it's very like home family owned business book story and i just i love it but anyway as you can see i've now moved on to the upstairs portion which ends up being kind of like the little library area so when you originally walk onto the upstairs portion we've kind of got like this big wall and I ended up placing down at some bookcases which I kind of like leveled on top to each other to make it look like floor to ceiling bookcases. And then I also went around again with some individual books and merged them into like the individual like gaps that were like empty, tried to make it feel really cluttered up. There is also like a little armchair area in there as well as another one of them little library carts which is from base game. There's also like a chess table. But now as you can see, I'm furnishing the kind of like the library research area. So in here, you can see in the corner, that's where the kids area is. I love that area. It's just, it's just so cute seeing. It's just so ideal. Like I said, if you've got a university student, maybe they haven't got any money for childcare. They need to take their kids to the library, keep the kid entertained, chuck them, in, I don't want to say chuck them, put them into the area in the corner. And you know, there's a doll's house. There is also a teddy bear. There's also a drawing station. But then in the actual library portion itself, there is one like singular desk. Maybe if your Sims want to come here and write their homework or like maybe write something, do some drawing. And there is also the two research stations as well as some more bookcases but now as you can see i've now moved on into the next portion which is the music shop or like the music store i don't even know why i said music store because i've already told you it ends up being pretty much a guitar shop because we currently don't have that many musical instruments in the game but i tell you what for the amount that we've got I'm really happy with the way this turned out, even though we only really have a guitar, a violin and a keyboard or piano, which at the end of the day, they're pretty much the exact same thing. For a music shop or like a guitar shop, I'm so happy with the way it turned out. It just looks really cool. So you can see as you walk in through the door, I've done this kind of like layered thing with a platform. So it kind of shows all the different types of guitars. I was thinking the ones that are on like the higher platform are maybe a little bit more expensive. They are all acoustic guitars. I've put three bigger ones at the back, kind of like size them up ever so slightly. And then I put one signed one in the middle and then I also just finish it off by adding these other two either side of it. And then on the other like portion of the platform, we have two different versions of electric guitars. One of them is from base game, like originally. And then one of them, I believe, is the Grim Reaper's guitar, <laughs> which sounds weird. But basically, there is an add-on for The Sims 4, which is, you know, like how the holiday pack is, it's from The Sims 4 base game. You don't need it to, like, buy it. It doesn't cost any money. It's kind of like an add-on that you can download completely for free. There's a very similar thing with an object that's called Grim's guitar, which is pretty much meant to be the Grim Reaper. You know, the Sim... You know when your Sims come to the end and they're going up in the sky? <laughs> there's that man, there's that geezer that comes, like, with the black robe. Grim Reaper, his guitar for some reasons in the game, but I don't know why they didn't add it into the actual initial base game, they just added it as like an add-on. So if you don't have that and you're confused, you might have to go and download it. Like I said, it's completely free, it's not gonna cost you anything, it's just kind of like an extra updated thing that I don't know why they, it must have been for an anniversary or something because I'm pretty sure they added it into the game a good few years back now, but can't think of any like monument thing that they would have done it for, but either way, Grimm's guitar is in here somewhere. And there is also some guitars on the wall that are kind of like 
placed into these almost like paintings. They're either a painting or they're meant to be a guitar kind of like stuck into it. We've got an orange one, we've also got a blue one, both of which are basically the exact same painting, just different swatches. And they are from the Get Famous expansion pack. I also placed some counters along the side of the back wall. So you can see that I merged in a bookcase into one of them just to kind of like fill out the wall quite nicely. I was thinking about originally placing down like a shelfing unit there, like just using the shelf item in the game and then just cluttering it up with loads of different like music stations and loads of different books and whatnot. But then I had the idea just to merge in a bookcase which I don't think I've ever done before but it's actually it's, it's quite smart because the decorations are already there and it's already like basically what I was going to do anyway and so I just merged in a bookcase into a counter filled out the space really nicely there is also a neon light on the wall now when you originally place it out of the build and buy menu it is bright pink as you would have seen but if you've got I think it's a better build buy mod installed you can switch the colour so I just changed it to a nice like kind of like YT off YT yellow swatch there is also some like movie posters on the wall I also put some like ivy and then some like plaques and stuff there is a few different kind of like guitar boxes stacked upon one another they are from the mosquito pack as well as kind of like an amp Amplifier that I ended up placing down in front of like that platformed area and then I also placed down some freezer bunny guitars behind the back desk so you would have seen it. I placed down like all the guitars kind of like on the platform and then there was a few kind of like dotted about I was thinking like customers came into the shop and then maybe they were trying it out and it hasn't been put back here and I didn't even realize that we had freezer bunny guitars I'm not gonna lie freezer bunny if you're not aware is pretty much like a mascot for the sims 4 or at least it used to be I feel like there is kind of like a tie between the llama and then the freezer bunny for kind of like the Sims 4 mascot because there's just kind of like the symbol or like whenever I see a, a freezer bunny or if I ever see a llama, more so a llama, I always associate with the Sims but maybe that's just me. But anyway, we have a freezer bunny guitar, we have two swatches of it, we have the pink one which is more so like the classic freezer bunny and then there is also a like a skeleton version of it. But now as you can see I've moved on onto the apartment portion and I'm just basically going around and just doing it so they're furnished in terms of they're moved in ready furnished so you can see the way that I'm doing it I'm just placing down a bunch of different counters some ovens and stoves and fridges basically the stuff that will be built in whenever you move into a house or an apartment like I said if you wanted to you could download this lot yourself and if you wanted to furnish the apartments they're kind of like already wallpapered and floored you could just always <laughs> wallpapered and floored that is a really bad description they're already like the bare basics is already there if you wanted to change it feel free you can you can basically do whatever you want once you download this off the gallery I feel like it'd be quite a fun challenge not that i'm saying this is going to be a challenge i'm not but if you want you to have a little bit of a challenge you could definitely try and furnish all three of these apartments i feel like it'd be quite fun but apart from that i'm just going to go around now finish it off i end up adding some like leaflets and envelopes by the front door to make it look like local taxi ranks and local like delivery services have been putting these leaflets through the front door not realizing that they're currently vacant and no one lives there yet but apart from that i'm just going to go around finish it off and that is basically it so anyway guys i'm going to end this voiceover right here so as always you can download this build via the gallery my origin id is jessica pie yt or you can just search for the hashtag Jessica Pye YT or just the hashtag Jessica Pye. As always, thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, if you do like my content, then please do subscribe. And hopefully I will see you in my next Sims 4 speedboarding video. Bye guys.